I had one day to show an American friend of mine, the Swiss Alps. And this is where I took him. My name is Frederick, and these are my adventures. Today, I brought an American friend of mine, Joby, to Shinensu. He's actually an ex-camper of mine from when I used to work as a camp counselor a few years ago. He reached out to me because he wanted to pop by Switzerland for a quick visit to the Swiss mountains. And now, I only had one day to impress him, so I had to make this count. We started in Kandertig, which is a picturesque Swiss village in the Berensee Oberland region of the Swiss Alps. And if you have time, you should totally walk around there, because it's kind of cool. The adventure will take place around Oshinense, and is part of the Via Alpina, which you might have heard of. It's probably the most famous path crossing Switzerland. The trail begins with a gentle climb through a lush forest, offering glimpses of the surrounding mountains along the way. There is a cable car going up most of the ascent, so you can take that and then just make it to a gentle stroll down to the lake. And this place is perfect for families with young kids or people with impairments. If you really struggle, there's actually a shuttle bus taking you from the cable car all the way to the lake. Unfortunately, when I filmed this video, I had some issues with my sound, and that's why you have a lot of overlay rather than me speaking in the picture, but I'm sure some of you prefer that. Right where you get up to the lake, you'll find anything you need as a tourist. Food, drinks, hotels, and there's literally no effort with maximum output. Coming up to the lake is obviously incredible, and especially with that color on the lake. And it's crazy how it's gonna get better the further up we get. So how do you feel about this so far? Pretty awesome. <laughs> Such an American thing to say. <laughs> And if you want a different angle of the lake, you can rent a boat. And for all you fishers out there, you can also get a daily permit. The lake is actually also home to several species of fish, including Arctic char, brown trout, and rainbow trout. So this makes it fairly popular with fishers. And as always, I've put everything in the description below. Oshinensee was formed by several landslides on the flanks of the Frindenhorn and Doldenhorn. The masses of rubble that broke off the Doldenhorn at an altitude of 2,100 meters with a volume of well over 100 million cubic meters formed a natural dam. The rock material is still permeable to water today, which is why Oshinensee is drained underground. The lake is located on an altitude of 1,560 meters and is fed by glacial meltwater and has a maximum depth of 56 meters. Since 2007, Oshinensee has been part of the Swiss Alps Jungfrau Altes UNESCO World Heritage Site. We make it along the side of the lake, and for now, it's still rather chill, so you can easily do this part with children. And whenever they get tired, you can always turn around and just go back to the lake and have a swim. While we continue, I'll answer the most common question I get in all my videos. What time of the year should you visit this place? And what can you expect in the different seasons? Just for your information, it helps me much more if you ask these questions here in the comments rather than writing me on Instagram, but you can of course do what you want. March to May is the spring season. The snow is melting and the flowers start blooming, with a bit of a sound of music vibe to it in May. It can be a good time for hiking, with fewer crowds and cooler temperatures. 
But keep in mind that the weather can be unpredictable, with the possibility of both snow and rain, so be prepared for changing conditions. And further up the mountains, you're probably also still gonna have snow. After, we have June to August, which is the summer season. This is the peak tour season, because it's the best time to go here if you want to enjoy warmer weather while hiking, swimming and boating. The weather up here is generally mild, with daytime temperatures averaging around 20 to 25 Celsius, or 68 to 77 Fahrenheit. It can be cooler at higher altitudes, and while the sun during the day makes it feel fairly warm, once it sets it's gonna get rather chilly, so bring some warm clothing for the evening if you're gonna stay up there. And the lake will most likely be crowded during the day, especially on weekends and holidays. So consider visiting early in the morning or late in the afternoon if you want to avoid the crowds. You can also go here in the fall, which is September to November. It's quieter with fewer tourists and cooler temperatures. This time of the year is super pretty and the surrounding mountains starts turning vibrant shades of red, orange and yellow. This is also a great time for hiking, but keep in mind that cable cars tends to be closed in November. And I've learned that the hard way. And lastly, December to February is the winter season, so if you enjoy skiing, snowboarding, snowshoeing, sledging and so on, that's the right time to go. The lake might also be frozen, but even if it's not, you're not going to get that vibrant colour, which might be the reason why you go here. I've been here both in the summer and early December, and I'll put the winter footage in the end of the video, because to be honest, I just don't think it looks as nice. And I use chapters, so if you want, you can always skip forward to that section. And after following the lake for a while, you make it to the first hut. And here, you can grab a drink or food. But we continue, and after the hut, it's basically just walking up the side of the mountain until we get to the next hut. This part is not super exciting, but if you look back, at least you're going to get some good views. I know I've said this in previous videos, but I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers. I know everyone asks you to subscribe to them, but to be honest, the people that actually need you to subscribe are the small content creators, because they need to hit those thousand subscribers. It costs you nothing and takes no effort. If you don't like my content, fine, but keep this in mind when you look at other small creators. But if you however like this video, please subscribe and consider liking and commenting as well. It's the only way for this video to be seen by more people. Up here, they have a fun farm. So if you have kids, which can actually make it all the way, I would argue that it's worth it. And same as with the previous hut, they serve drinks and food, but you won't be able to stay here overnight. If you want to do that, you either have to stay by the lake, or you can stay on the top of the mountain. So Joby, what are these for? Cattle guards. Yeah, nice. Do you have them in the US? Uh, you do. They're a little, they're, they're more of a two-sided fence. Okay, do you usually have animals in the, in the mountains the same way that we do here? Not up as high. Okay, so Just you... Just in the valleys. Okay, so you don't bring them up in the mountains in the summer and then bring them down in the winter? No, no. Okay. At least now, we get some glimpse of the goal, the Blümlis Alpitte. Before we continue, we'll have to refuel though. And we are simple people, so we eat simple food. 
Before we headed up here, we just went to the store in the city and got some bread and cheese. As you continue now, you will walk next to the massive glaciers. But I would lie if I said that it was easy, because it's just uphill the whole way, and you won't get to rest until you get to the top. On this hike, you will pass certain areas where you go straight down on the side. And this is not like my Alpstein video, where everything is very much built for tourists, so there's no place to hold on to, so this is not the place for the faint of heart. And a little bit of a warning, so you're aware. There's no water along the way after the last hut. You must make sure that you bring enough water to get to the top, which I obviously did not do. And you will have to buy water when you get up there, because you cannot drink from the tap. That lake is not a Schienensee, it's Blümlis Alpsee. When you get to the mountain pass, you think you're there, and uh, you're not. There's still a bit of struggle left. Here you are. How does it feel making it all the way Feels good. to the top? Not a lot of climbing. We're used to the climbing. I like it. Uh, glaciers in the background. Was it easier or harder than you thought? I don't really have any expectations. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you want to go to the next hit after this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a view from here. Yeah. So I love this stuff. Like, I, I love apple juice, and like, I, I love orange juice. Do you like cider to drink? I like cider to drink too. Yeah, that I, was my favorite. Yeah, but I like American ciders rather than European ciders. Well, Talking about, if you go to Sweden, it's so, like you have like Coverbergs, and it's so sweet. It's like, it's way too sweet for me. I like the drier, basically. Yeah. So they have the helicopter, that's probably Vega, which is like, they're sa probably saving someone from up here. Like, it's pretty, helicopters don't come that much in the US. I feel like you see it as more of a common thing. Mm. Is there a second one? When getting up, little did we know, but we were about to see a major rescue operation. A glacier had collapsed, leaving people stranded up there. It was kind of a crazy day though. Multiple helicopters were flying everywhere around us to save people. Joby were amazed of the use of helicopters, and the amount of them. Apparently, this would never happen in the US. They would just send out a search and rescue team, but here you had like five something helicopters flying around. Today we have done the hike from Kandersteg up to the Hitte we have here in the background with all the glaciers and everything you can see there. On the other side of us here you have the hike I did last week or a few weeks ago where you're going from Muren, where we went from Muren, to Grisalp, over to this side. Grisalp is the place which you have down there. So the hike we did today, we did because we were com coming here with car, and therefore we want to go up and down the same, same way. So you know I've told you in the past that you're supposed to take public transport in Switzerland, because it's so much easier. You just go over these massive mountains, and then you can just go straight out because if you want to go back to the car it's like two hours of just public transport to get there today we've done or after the the full day we will have done 20 kilometers so it's 10 kilometers up here and then 10 kilometers down there it's a total of 1600 meters of ascent which is one mile 
and obviously given that we go up and down you're going to look at the same amount of ascent and descent it takes roughly five hours the hike up here or like six hours the hike up here obviously it takes time to walk but downhill it's just you just quickly go down so you could so, as you can see on the video so here in the background you have some of the biggest glaciers here in Switzerland really massive really impressive and they just flow all the way down let's talk about rating this hike versus other hikes in Switzerland my favorite place in Switzerland is Zermatt and there you have the best hike I've ever made a video of that's my absolute favorite hike and it seems like it's your favorite too since most of my views on my videos are from that video the whole of Zermatt is a magical place but there are of course other areas of Switzerland which are super cool too and this is one of them This hike, from a raw nature perspective, is absolutely a 10 out of 10. But I wouldn't want to compare this with Zermatt, it's just too different. So if you have time, go to both places. <laughs> but the funny thing with both of these places is that you get amazing views with literally zero effort. In both places you can take cable cars, trains, shuttle buses, and it's just insane what you see. If you look at this from a seaworthiness point of view, it's absolutely 10, even if you don't make it all the way up to the top. The physical effort can be adjusted between 1 to 7, depending on how far you want to go. But regardless, you're going to get some of the best views in Switzerland. And people go to Lauterbrunnen to look at a waterfall, but they miss out on this. So Americans, you must start going here and visiting Switzerland. None of my American friends have ever asked me to go here. They're all about Lauterbrunnen and Zermatt. So why should you go to Öschnensee then? And what are the key qualities of this place? I would argue it's one of the most beautiful lakes in the Swiss Alps. And the lake is surrounded by towering mountains and lush forests, making the whole setup picture perfect. And despite its popularity, the area around Ischnensee is peaceful, with plenty of quiet spots to relax. It is a protected natural area and is home to a variety of wildlife, including ibex, marmoth and golden eagles. And if you want to go somewhere for more than just a lake, the region is actually rich in cultural heritage and have several traditional Swiss villages around. And by the lake, you have stuff to do for a whole day, barbecuing, swimming, rowing the boat, and just look at the animals. As I said in the intro, I only had one day to show my American friend the best place in Switzerland, and I hope you see why I took him here. For those of you who are more interested in scenic videos with music, I'll post one in the next few weeks. It will be an extended version with even more drone shots. Feel free to let me know in the comments whether you prefer these scenic videos with the drone footage over me explaining about the trail. Once down at the lake, we just decided to go around the corner, and that's not really what happened. You keep going down? Yeah, I mean, we can just go around the corner there, no? Yeah. Or do you... What do you think? Works for me. Always hold on to it and you're fine. I think you're more comfortable with this than I am, so... Yeah, I love this stuff.
We found a spot where we were a bit further away from others, and I wanted to keep a bit of a distance so I could play with my drone without disturbing too many people. How did you like the water? It's warm to me. It's warm, okay, cool. So, yeah, okay. It's I'm tropical. Gonna, I'm gonna cry like a baby when <laughs> I jump in, but uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Were there any like dangerous animals or anything? There's nothing. Cool. I actually like it. Yeah, it's good I, I, I still don't see it as as cold as, uh, as as fresh as sorry as warm as you. I would yeah. call it fresh. Yeah, it's fresh. I would refresh. probably be able to swim. You don't call it tropical? Yeah, tropical. Do you think you will be able to make it to the other side? Oh yeah. And not like oh and back. Sorry, and back. Yeah. Okay, cool. Not me. <laughs> it's like half a mile, 0.7 each way. Yeah. Mile and a half. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of cool. My friend is a long distance swimmer, and to be honest, <laughs> something is wrong with him. This is glacier water, and he just stays in for like half an hour swimming to the middle of the lake and back. And I, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to say, it's just crazy. <laughs> That's why she was walking so hard. <laughs> there we go. I did expect Ow. it to be easier than it was actually, <laughs> but Ow. I made it. Ow. <laughs> These are definitely rocks. <laughs> There we go. I would have been kicking right there. <laughs> we tried to get back to rent a boat. And don't make the same mistake as we did, because apparently the boats need to be back at 5, and we got there a little bit late, so they were already closed. But we went to have some ice cream instead, which I guess is eating our sorrows away, but <laughs> it was really nice. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Can I have a small ice cream, please? Huh? How do you like it? Ice cream, ice cream. This is exactly what I needed. Yeah. I still have uh, chips as well. Oh, yeah. We have more food. Mm -hmm. Our nice. lunch. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as you've noticed, I make less videos now than I've made in the past. It's mainly due to the huge amount of effort, and to be honest, I also don't know if people like it. So if you liked it, please, please, please say so in the comments. Also, like the video. There's literally no effort pressing that thumbs up, and it does help me out. But the biggest thing though is the subscription. Again, I know that everyone asks you for it. But it would mean the world to me, and once I hit those thousand subscribers, I will start uploading more frequently. Either way, thank you very much for watching and uh, goodbye.